Nehemiah chapter 8. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man unto the street that was before the water gate. You saw those gates in chapter 3. So they're outside in the streets. I mean, who would have a meeting? They say, keep it in the church house. They're outside. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe, the book of Ezra, to bring the book of the law of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and when the, which the Lord had commanded Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Now the seventh month is the month that has multiple holiday observance. We're going to come across one particular one soon. And he read therein before the street. He's in the street preaching. And people come up to him when you street preach. That's not in the Bible. Uh, As I brought the law before the congregation, both men and women, and all that could hear and understand upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street. The temple's built, but he's not in the temple. He's in the street. That was before people don't study the Bible. That was before the water gate. So there's the water gate, and like I said, chapter three, it mentions the water gate. From the morning unto midday, six hours. Six AM to six PM. Where did churches get off closing at midday? At the noon service from the King James Bible. When the same people tell you, well, street preachers not in the Bible, they probably couldn't tell you, well, why does every church close at noon? There it is. Before the men and women, and those that could understand, and the ears of all people were attentive unto the book of the law. They don't see that today. They were listening to what the law said. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, he stood on the pulpit. And the pulpit wasn't plastic, it was wood. You want to be biblical? Have your preacher stand on the pulpit. Which he, they had made for the purpose. This pulpit has been purposely designed for Ezra to stand on and teach the people. And beside him stood Mananiah and Shema. And Anaya and Yudra, and Yudra Haika and Mathura on his right hand, and on his left hand, Padaya and Mishio, Makaiah and Bushum, and Hashem, Dibana, Zechariah and Mishmo. So here is Nehemiah, and there are people, men to the left and men to the right of him. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was above all the people. So the preacher, is, the pastor, the preacher is above the people in the church. And when you see a church where the people are up and the pastor is down, that's not Bible. That's not Bible. He's standing up high so he can proclaim his voice for all to hear. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. So if you have a church where the preacher said, okay, we're going to stand to read the word of God. We're going to honor the word of God. You've got it out of Nehemiah. That's scripture. By the way, in the old English church, except you were old or medically inclined you stood for the entire service there were no pews come a long way haven't we and we, the place we were we lived at we had called mystic village they had an old church in there and when you go in the old church man you look at those people they were wooden hard on your behind they were not comfortable at all and yet revivals came out of that yeah that, that was early that was the congregational church you have to pay for the pews. 
the, the seats were hard and uncomfortable and the church was cold and yet the hearts were warm on fire with the Lord. And today the, the pews are padded and air conditioned and heat and then nothing happened. You want to get back to a revival? Put your butt on a hard pew. If not, stand up for the Lord. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Soldiers of the cross. Just reading the Bible. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen. Amen. Amen in, in church is biblical. <laughs> Pulpit's biblical. Street preaching is biblical. Standing for the word of God as it's being read is biblical. And amen is biblical. With lifting up their hands. Lifting your hands up. You don't do it for show. You do it as Lord God fill me. That's what you're saying. And that is a symbol of one of the offerings that the priest would offer to God. It's called the wave offering. Or the heave offer. It wasn't to do the, 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 the disco or the rap music or, you know, getting boogie woogie. Lord God, fill me. That's what it is. I, I've seen people raise their hand. That don't bother me. I, I don't do it. And they bowed their heads. As you would put all heads bowed, eyes closed. And worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. I don't know if that's literal, but have you seen pictures of people in the Middle East area, whether they're of God or Allah? They've got their faces down in that dirt with their butts up in the air. I look at that it's like, ouch! But Jeshua and Benai, Shabiah, Jimin, Jacob, Shephasai, Hoja, Mesa, Kilita, Azariah, Jazbad, Anna, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. All right? You're going to go to church. You're going to have an open Bible. According to the scriptures today, you are to cause the people to understand. That's what church is for. It's for your learning. It's for you to get more revelation from God from the preacher that God has put ahead to, to make you understand the scriptures more, even though with your Bible reading. All right, here we go. Here's the main verse, 8. Nehemiah 8, 8. You want a church. So they read in the book of the law of God, distinctly, clear and plain, and that's the only time that word shows up, distinct, distinctly. Yeah. Well, the Lord said, oh, and God said, oh, hallelujah, oh, God, you know, and, and shot the chapter What are you doing? What are you doing? You sound like a Native American going for war. You're not supposed to act like that in the pulpit. Black people doing their churches. Oh, oh. You read the Bible distinctly. You cause the people to understand. Tongues is not for understanding in the church. And gave the sense to make it known and cause them to understand the reading. Understand distinctly the sense, understanding, understood. That's why you go to church. You come out of church, you have no idea anything in the Bible. You need to find another church. And Nehemiah which is the Tarshua, that's the guy in charge, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy. This is six hours later. Unto the, pe unto the Lord your God, mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord. It's been a long time been 70 years you say well did they have a synagogue showed up in babylon the word synagogue showed up in babylon it's been a long time since they heard the word of god the law in jerusalem that's what they're weeping about we're finally home 
We're finally under God. We're finally where we belong. And they're not in a temple. They're out in the water street, water gate. Then he said unto them, go your way. Eat the fat. That's kind of weird because Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 35 tells the people, the Jews, not to eat the fat. That was to burn on the altar. Now that's not a contradiction, but I can't explain that. I'm going to be honest with you. The law says don't eat the flat and Nehemiah, and Nehemiah is not going to violate the law. And drink the sweet. No, it's not soda pop. It, the wine is sweet. I had drinks where they had sweet. Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. They ain't got nothing ready. They're celebration. Here, let me give you some food. You don't have anything. Your food's not prepared. You haven't made anything. You haven't been thinking about, here, have our food. For this day is holy, a holiday is where it comes from. Holiday, holy day. We just took the Y off and put an I for me, myself. Unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Remember that. That's in the scripture, in the, in the church. The joy of the law. A joy of the Lord. That's what keeps you going. I've got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. Joy will get you through storms. Joy will get you through bad news. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send fortunes, and to make great mirth. It's a happy time now. Because they had understood the words. That that were declared unto them. Understanding the law. And being, being read to them. And making known to them. They're happy. People during church. You know they've been looking at their clock. I wish you'd hurry up and finish. Don't go. You're going to be like that. Don't go. God don't want you there. You don't want to be there. And on the second day, the second day, two days, were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, as are described, even to understand the words of the law. The second day they're going about with the open word. And they found written in the law, this could be Exodus 23, 16, 34, 22, Leviticus 23, 42 and 43 in Nehemiah, which is not the law of Nehemiah, but they found written the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. Leviticus 16, 13 and 16. This is the feast of tabernacles. And if you were to take all the days in a year of all the feasts and study them out, you would probably say that this is the feast that would be the birth of Jesus Christ. If it's the feast of tabernacles, where God indwells in the tabernacle of man, 100% man, 100% God, here the nation of Israel is back in their land, and on the next day of the reading of the law, they are celebrating the Feast of the Tabernacles. That they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount. Jerusalem's on a mount. And fetch olive branches. Olive's a type of Holy Spirit. And pine branches. Myrtle branches. That's the first time myrtle shows up. Myrtle branches. Palm branches. Any kind of branches you can find. And branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written. This is around September. And guess what England and America celebrates at this time of September? Do you not go to a county fair and there's booths for pies and booths for games? That comes out of the King James Bible. They're making those little booths. 
for their family. And again, like I said, if you look at the Feast of Tabernacles, you're in a tabernacle. You're not in your tabernacle, but you're in a tabernacle. Is that not Jesus Christ? And when we went through the, the law, we went through that. And then when it comes to the eighth day, and Jesus Christ was circumcised the eighth day, and we looked at Mary offering her sacrifice and the circumcision of Jesus, this would probably be the birthday of Jesus, but I can't put it down scripture. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths. Everyone upon the roof of his house. They had houses, but they made booths. And in the, their courts. And in the courts of the house of God. <laughs> around the house of the Lord. Now they're not tents. They're not fabricated or made. They are branches. Jesus said when he had a blind man, he says, what do you see? He says, I see men as trees walking. And there's a few places in the Bible where a tree is a, is a symbol of a man and a man a symbol of a tree. Quite interesting. House of God in the street of the water gate, in the street of the gate of Ephraim. So there's just booths everywhere. Like the... The fairs have come in. Cotton candy, uh, elephant, right, whatever, booths. And all the people don't know why they're doing things they do. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, that's Joshua with another name. Joshua has many spellings for his name. Unto that day, had not the children of Israel done so, and there was a very great gladness. So, this hasn't happened in a while. Also, day by day, each passing moment, from the first day unto the last day, he read the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days, eighth day for circumcision, and on the eighth day was a Solomon, Solomon, Solomon assembly according unto the manner, according to the law. And if Christ was born on the, on the Feast of Tabernacles, that eighth day he would have been circumcised. What would have been the, the assembly? His adopted father, his mother, the priests that do the, the, the circumcision, Anna. <laughs> there are a lot of people there. I'm saying I'm not gonna say one hundred percent that's the birthday of Jesus, but there there's a possibility. <clears throat> what greater possibility? Let's look, look at this, for the Jews to come back in the promised land, open up the law, which is what? The word, right? What's John one one say? <laughs> Jesus is the word. 